Welcome. My name is Henk Kuipers. I work as innovator at the uh, Rabobank InnoHub. Um, we do lots of projects there, and I've done uh, lots of IoT projects in the past, which I'm not going to talk about today, because I am here because I was asked by the movement team to talk about their project. As the movies, uh, they call themselves the movies team, uh, are now all in Australia, they needed somebody to replace them, uh, so that's me. Uh, at Rabobank, we also did some stuff on, uh, on, on uh, LoRaWAN technology, uh, as I said, uh, as you could see on the previous sheet. And uh, on, the, on, the to on top of the Rabobank tower, we have a Things Network gateway installed. I installed it together with Thomas Telkamp, and it's running very nicely. But we hear about uh, movement. Where do they come from? Well, movement was one of the teams in the Rabobank uh, moonshot, moonshot campaign, which is a worldwide campaign for people uh, to stimulate them uh, to come up with new ideas to innovate the bank. They were one of the teams. I in the, I'm in the jury. I saw their idea, and I was immediately enthusiastic. Uh, so out of those 255 ideas, they were one of the four winners. And they were able to go into an acceleration program to develop their idea come up with an MVP and start a real project. Here's the team. After they won, they're very happy, uh, the movies. So what did they do? Two, two of the guys, they uh, are farmer's sons, so they immediately went back to their, to their father's farm to test out the first uh, equipment to see uh, well, how LoRa technology works, uh, if they could track a cow. Uh, and these are the results of the first tests they did with a cow with a collar. Uh, but they needed some more uh, improvements, of course. So they went to Sodak. Uh, that's one of the people uh, I, I already knew Sodak, and uh, we, we, uh, we went uh, to, to visit them. And they had great ideas about how we could make this innovation work. So we developed uh, the first uh, tracker, which was based on a collar. The collar would be around the neck, um, and inside, uh, on, on the collar, there's a, a small um, uh, uh, device that can track the cow with GPS connection, LoRa, and uh, a solar panel to charge the battery. So out they went and did their first tests in Australia. Um, and uh, well, with the collar, they had some, uh, some hard times because it, was too, it appeared to be too time consuming to put all these collars on the neck of the cow. It would be four to five minutes per cow. For a couple of thousand cows, that's too much time. Uh, it's also dangerous for the cows to have the collar on, so uh, they can be stuck behind a branch, for example, or the cow uh, might be a calf that is growing and uh, it needs to be readjusted. It's too much work. So they needed another kind of prototype. Sodec and uh, Movement came up with this solution. It's an ear tag. Uh, the ear tag is here, it's here. It's, um, it's a, a smaller, smaller form factor. It can be attached to the ear of the cow. It has the solar panel, the GPS, and the LoRa chip on board, and it works. So, great job, Sodek. That's very well done. The movement team changed a bit. Uh, they had some other members, so there's an uh, Australian uh, CTO uh, on board now and a data analyst because, uh, uh, well, it's nice to have a cow connected, but uh, you need the data and to analyze it, of course, to do something useful. They did lots and lots of interviews with farmers, asking them, what's, what, what are your problems? What do, you want, what do, what do we need to solve for you? And, uh, well, the general questions were, uh, or the general uh, problems were, uh, where are my cattle, of course? Uh, because now mustering is a very expensive uh, process where they go uh, using helicopters and quads and motorbikes, etc., to, to, to gather the cows. It's very expensive. Uh, it would be far easier if they would know any time, any place where the cows are. But they also want to know if the, car, the cattle is in trouble, uh, if there are jumping fences, if they are being stolen, um, uh, are they sick, are they calving? Uh, there's all kinds of uh, data uh, that we can gather and where we can see uh, if some of these uh, questions can be answered out of the data. And that's the, ho the whole challenge of, of movement. So, uh, what they did uh, in, the, um, uh, in, in the Rabobank laboratory, we have uh, an MVP lab, and we have uh, an MVP team that can help you build solutions, and they started building an app. And with this app, uh, it, uh, will be, uh, you, you can start building up uh, knowledge about each cow. So every time a cow uh, um, uh, gets its ear tag, there's a, um, uh, a QR code on the tag, can be scanned with the app so you can onboard the cow and from then on you can register all the information about that cow based on the, on the tag. And that's how they started uh, working. Oh, the next, oh, this one. So, um, 
okay, this one I'm going to skip. There are lots of cows, we know that. <laughs> um, they're setting up 15 pilots all across uh, Australia with uh, the new ear tag. And uh, this is, uh, uh, there are lots of testimonials com coming back already with uh, people uh, ha having dying cows and they want to know if the cow is dying uh, before it's dying, of course. And that can be seen in the data now. Um, they also have uh, uh, questions like, um, they want to know about the grazing patterns. So where are the cows going? Where are they grazing? And is it a smart idea to be grazing there? And sometimes they have to uh, help the cows to get to another place where it's much better to graze. And they can do that. So, uh, what's the challenge to have something that's easy to use, give actionable uh, insights, actionable insights, and, and, and have a one-stop solution? That's what they're working on. So, the ear tag, uh, as I said, you can scan the QR code. It can live for about five years. The solar panel is charging the battery. It, it locates the cow every 30 minutes uh, with an accuracy of 15 to 30 meters. And um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the ear tag is very uh, well fixed to the ear of the cow, so it won't be lost. So, how do you apply it? Well, that's the general applicator for ear tags, so that's easy. Um, and uh, in practice, it looks like this. <laughs> Farmer comes in, takes the applicator, cowers inside the paddock, and he goes over. Do you have some sound? It's a nice sound, lots of noise. No, no sound. Here you see the cow being uh, tagged. OK, and imagine it's uh, 35 to 40 degrees out there. It's a harsh circumstances to work in. Cow is on board it. And the next. So this is going very rapidly. And from now on, they can add more and more information about that cow inside the app. So they know the history of the cow. It's very nice. So how does it work? Well, as I said, it's pretty simple. The, the app talks to the cloud application. Um, the, uh, the, the, there's a, an antenna uh, gateway picking up the signal of the cow walk, walking in the field, and uh, the location is being done using GPS. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. This is what it looks like in practice. Uh, this is one of the field, uh, field situations. This is a pretty high antenna of about 20 meters. Um, they make a radio plan before they uh, start working at a farm, farm, just using an open source tool. Uh, so they have an idea of uh, the range they can cover with uh, the, the antenna that is targeted. Um, and then uh, they have several solutions. Uh, one uh, that can be uh, moved around, this one, it's, it can be uh, taken to another place uh, if, if necessary. It uses, uh, and this one has a, a solar panel and a SIM card, can also be uh, uh, moved around or on the homestead. They can reach roughly about 10 kilometers, so um, that's a, a pretty wide range for, uh, for tracking cows. Um, uh, this is the proposition they're going to make. I have to uh, say this is still in pilot stage, so uh, this is a, a proposition that is not uh, for sale on the market yet, but this is what they are targeting at. So $50 per cow per year uh, is what they uh, think they can ask for, uh, for their service. No, current features, so what can they see? They can see if a cow has stopped, has stopped moving. This is a very important alert, of course. They can see if a fence is probably broken, so cows are going to another area where they're not supposed to go. Um, they can zoom into the animal details. They can have a, a jump the fence alert, so if they think they are jumping fences. They can uh, locate, of course, the cows where they all are for mustering. Uh, they can see the grazing patterns, so they can maybe uh, uh, make some adjustments there and they get notification, uh, notifications in a dashboard of uh, what the cows are actually doing, activities. That's basically the whole project. Um, if there are any questions, I'd like to know them. Uh, we also have the guys from Sodec aboard. If you want to know anything more, the stand of Sodec is just around the corner. They will be here all the time, so you can uh, go and, and, and ask some more. Is there anything in the audience, any, anybody in the audience who wants to ask something? The stand would have been my first question, but um, we have we have an, a question here. Hi, nice Hi. talk, thank you. Uh, I see there's two tags. At some point, do you think the number will be combined onto the other one, so that it's just one tag? 
I don't understand the question. On the ear, there's a number. Oh, okay. At some point could I think that's a previous. Like I don't know, but I think that's a, a, a tag they used to, before. So the other one's new. Yeah. So you never remove the old tags? No. So what happens if the battery I, I don't know that sort of. Uh, no, you no. only have two years. No, but it's a <laughs> great initiative. More, more questions. It's, it's great to see how this is working, even in Australia and the outback. Any questions? Any ideas? We have a question in the far back. And I have just enough time to walk up to you. Thanks. Um, on a large farm, uh, I'm guessing over uh, 20, 30 kilometers, uh, typically how uh, the nodes planned uh, to get decent coverage, uh, particularly in sort of mountainous areas, that sort of stuff. Is, is, that, is, that, a, is that a problem in terms of um, uh, the cost of deploying the uh, LoRaWAN gateways? So, no, I don't, I don't catch the question exactly. Uh, if, if, I correct, uh, if I understand correctly, um, these areas are huge. Yes. So there's, there's, there's enormous amounts of, of, of uh, landscape to be covered. Yeah. How do you set up the nodes correctly in such a way that it's not too costly and you, you get your, your information? Well, at the moment, there's, there's, of course, a limit at the range they can cover. Uh, if you want to expand that range, you have to come up with new solutions, maybe uh, Wi-Fi uh, connections between uh, gateways to, to reach the endpoint where you can connect to the cloud. Some uh, at some uh, places, they, have, uh, um, they can use a SIM card for uh, connecting to, to the internet, but there are, of course, areas where there is still a big challenge to cover. Yeah, absolutely. So you can't, can't do the whole country yet, no. <laughs> Next question. Thanks, it was a great talk. Uh, probably more for the SODEC guys, but it's great seeing it in Australia where it's obviously quite sunny. Um, yeah. What would be the effect in somewhere where you don't have as much sunshine? So you were That's up in one for you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Itai from SODEC, you can uh, we, we answer this. Answer. Yep. If you have any predictions about the battery usage and the, the solar panel. Yes, uh, let's say in the Netherlands it would be hard to do the same job with the same uh, size of solar panel. And because of that, we, did, uh, we made this device for Australia mostly, or Latin America, a place like that, that you have uh, a lot of sun. Um, yeah, different countries, you have different color and things like that. And for the other questions, in the future, it will be combined. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, any last question, now that he's still here? The stand is outside. You can find the stand. I think it's easy to, to spot the stand. Just, just look for the cow. Okay, in that case, uh, thank you, Hank Kuiper. One last applause and awesome talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>